I want to get a very good morning to you, and I'm very pleased to announce we have on the line with us this morning the Premier of Nevis, Mr. Mark Brantley. Mr. Brantley, a very good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Clyde. Good morning to you and your listeners. Uh, good to be with the Winifem family this morning. Well, sir, I want to thank you so much for taking our call. I know you must be a busy man today and every other day, for that matter. Uh, we wanted to get from you, um, first of all, uh, a sense of what's happening on Nevis. Uh, you have a partial lifting of the curfew. What can you tell us about what's happening on Nevis this morning? Well, things are going fairly well. It appears, it's early days, but it appears that people are generally compliant. Uh, we have asked the police to assist in, in some of the crowd control. I continue to appeal to our people based on what has been announced. Uh, we expect that there will be some easing on Monday, Tuesday, and again on Thursday and Friday. So I don't think people need to to stock up as if they were stocking up for the next week or two. Uh, I think that, you know, we can be more moderate in what we're doing, and I hope that that will control the crowds. We've also seen in Nevis uh, the supermarkets stepping up in a major way, like Best Buy. They're now allowing you to order online and they will do next-day delivery. So some people are taking advantage of that as well. This morning, so far, not too many problems. Uh, the police have been out, and uh, they're indicating that uh, as, th- as of this time, 11 a.m., things are going well. Are there any issues that are uh, percolating, if you like, that you would like to clarify? Anything, perhaps, that's uh, making the rounds uh, via social media that you think is worthy of some sense of clarification? Not at this point. I thought the Prime Minister was pellucid uh, last night. I, myself, uh, had uh, my usual program uh, last night on, on uh, Vaughn Radio. And, uh, again, we took quite a bit of time. We had two hours to explain and explain again and explain again. <laughs> so I think that uh, people are clear as to what is required of them. Uh, at this point, I believe it comes down to discipline and responsibility. Our people will have to appreciate that ultimately it is up to them to determine how quickly we get out of this situation. I compare it to being in prison. Uh, you, you, you get time off for good behavior. Well, this is an opportunity for our people to demonstrate the best possible behavior, continue to practice the social distancing, continue to stay at home, and, of course, continue to do the things in terms of hygiene, washing hands, etc., that we have been promoting and promoting and promoting. I think if people were to do those things, then we break the back of this COVID-19 and can resume normalcy at a, a much more rapid pace. Uh, the Prime Minister has already signaled that the intention is to slowly start to normalize, but that will depend, obviously, on what our people are doing and what the medical advice is. So I think that our people have an opportunity to demonstrate the responsible behavior and the level of discipline that is required. Uh, I tend to use this time to drive around and get a sense. Of course, the box stops with me on Nevis. And uh, in doing that, I have noticed that, you know, um, some people are still trying to gather at the, the um, shops and things of that nature. So we're appealing to people. I think these things can wait. We hope that the country is going to get back to normalcy. The quicker we can get back there, the better. And, um, and that is what we're seeking to do. Are there any observations you want to share with our listeners uh, pertaining to perhaps our consumption habits and shopping patterns? Well, I think that what has happened is that people have, you know, reacted in a way that it's natural. Perhaps people are uncertain, and so they have sought to buy up as much as they can. Uh, I believe that all of us in leadership position have been uh, asking our people not to do that. All of us have been explaining to our people that food is there, food is available, uh, the, the cargo ships are still coming in, bringing in food. And in addition, I can speak to Nevis specifically, we have ramped up our our um, our food production in a very significant way. So that, too, has been very helpful. Um, our people are planting more food, our farmers, et cetera, um, are planting. And that is really helping us in a very significant way to get to where we need to be in terms of food security. So I'm I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing. Now, of course, you have to balance uh, the health of the economy as well as the health of the people. I know which one you're going to put first, of course. But are you starting to to look at what seems to be uh, coming at you, uh, what's appearing on the horizon? Um, Let's say if you manage to get the the COVID-19 on the control, uh, the way you'd like to have it on the control, uh, what are some of the things you're looking at in terms of the economy and people uh, finding means of empowerment? 
Well, that's a discussion that we've already started on Nevis. Um, we have reached out to some uh, persons who are far better in terms of their training than I am in terms of the economy. And we are hopeful that we will be able to take some good advice and, you know, proceed in a, in a sensible way in relation to that. Uh, what I will say is that it is a matter of some concern for us. Naturally, the economy um, is heavily dependent on outside flows in terms of tourism, in terms of goods. And so we have to think about whether we reorient what we're doing, that we adopt a different approach in terms of getting us to where we need to be going forward. I think there's some lessons that have been learned here and some lessons that we have to take to heart, uh, lessons such as food security, that we can no longer allow our food security to be in the hands of outside. Uh, we have now to do more in terms of getting ourselves ready uh, to feed ourselves. So all of these are concerns that naturally we have and that, and that we have to deal with. So... The reorientation has to come. What that reorientation is going to look like is a matter that we continue to discuss and debate even now. My cabinet has been very engaged on that particular matter. In, in the context of lifting restrictions, that debate is, is global at the moment. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, on uh, lifting restrictions pertaining to uh, remarks made, of course, by the WHO? And, of course, the fact that you headed to Parliament on, on Friday. Um, to perhaps uh, move a resolution to extend uh, the state of emergency. Can you tell us uh, your feelings about that and, and what insights you'd like to share with us? Well, I think that we have to be cautious. That is the Biden rule now, that caution is the important ingredient, that we do not get overly optimistic. The cases in St. Kitts and Nevis, we have been fortunate, and God has been good to us, that even though we've had uh, 14 cases None are hospitalized. The four in Nevis uh, are in excellent health. And so we haven't had the strain put on our health system as we have seen elsewhere. Having said that, I think that we are cautiously optimistic, but we have to be prudent and sensible and cautious in what we do going forward. Opening up too soon might cause us to have a relapse and then result in us having to shut down again. Obviously, we wouldn't want to, to do that. We wouldn't want that to happen. And so it's important that whatever we do, we do with the best available advice. And I would anticipate that going forward, what is likely to happen is a gradual reopening, where perhaps we move from some services to others, and then we gradually seek to reopen. I would anticipate that the reopening to outside elements, that is reopening our borders, that would probably be the last resort. So we have to, to look at this, and our people must understand that the government is approaching this in a very sober and sensible way, and we're acting on the best available advice that we're getting from our technical teams, who themselves are layers in the PAHO and WHO, as the case may be. So the last thing we want is to reopen too quickly and then have a relapse when we go back into lockdown. So we have to manage the situation, and again, calling on our people to be responsible and disciplined as we move forward. And, of course, we have a situation in China where um, Chinese uh, nationals returning from Russia um, caused another spike uh, in the, in the coronavirus issue when China thought it had it under control. So I, I take the point that you're making. Now, in terms of the state of emergency, um, just for clarity, if you have a, a resolution before the parliament, um, do you have to have one in the Nevis Island Assembly as well, or will the federal parliament be, suffice? I think based on the advice I have had, the federal parliament would suffice. Um, it is a national emergency that is being declared, and His Excellency the Governor General will act, obviously, on behalf of the nation of St. Kitts and Nevis. We have clearly had the same protocols across the board. We thought that that was critical, that there was no conflicting information or conflicting approach, and so we've allowed the Prime Minister in his rightful position as Prime Minister, to lead entirely on this matter. And I have provided the necessary support from the Nevis end to ensure that the people of Nevis are also taken care of and also kept safe. So it's been a well-coordinated effort, but the idea is that whatever happens at the national level here, in the context of this national response to COVID-19, then it will be for the federal parliament to act. And, and finally, Premier, I know you're busy. I don't want to take too much more of your time. Uh, as you look, as you rub that crystal ball I'm told you have somewhere, what are you seeing for the near future in terms of opportunities on the one hand and challenges in terms of what may have gone with the wind and what may be coming our way that perhaps can, can fill some of the gaps that you, ex you anticipate? 
Well, that's the million-dollar question. Um, it's uh, difficult to, to, to say. I'm not a soothsayer, and I do not have that crystal ball. I haven't been able to find it yet, Clyde. But what I'll say <laughs> is that um, clearly I expect that our economy will have to be adjusted. We depend very heavily on tourism, and there's no guarantee as to when that will come back to us. Uh, that, of course, depends on us having open borders, and uh, that is yet unclear as to when we'll be able to reopen. So a lot of our people employed in the hotel industry or employed in the allied industries, people who cater to the cruise ships, etc., all of those, I think, will be, will be under some challenge in relation to all of those at this point in time. So I feel that um, the opportunities will come with innovation. I'm already seeing people who are doing things, simple things like delivery, supermarket shopping for people, um, online shopping. I think that there's some, some practices which are perhaps commonplace elsewhere, which have not really taken off here yet. I think that they're likely to do so now. I think there'll be some opportunities in agriculture as we emphasize greater food security, agro-processing feeding ourselves, uh, buying and eating local. I think that all of those provide some new opportunities. And I anticipate that construction will continue to do its part here. We and Nevis are going to be shortly ad- advising of some uh, incentives to promote and encourage construction activity. And so I anticipate that that is going to happen at the federal level. I would imagine that the Citizenship by Investment Program should not be affected as, as badly. And so I would expect that that will continue to perform um, and with the benefits that that brings. But I think the area that I'm most concerned about is tourism because the cruise ship industry and even the stale uh, visitors, they all depend on us reopening our borders. And that we know will be a challenging situation, particularly that our main source markets like the United States are being pressured now, the United Kingdom being severely pressured by COVID-19. So much of what happens there will dictate what happens here. And so we are, in every sense, interconnected in that, in that way. Well, Premier, I want to thank you very much for speaking to us this morning and, of course, invite your parting comments, perhaps uh, one even directed at those people who have to spend some time at home and who perhaps can find things to do at home that they didn't find time for before. Uh, Clive, thank you again for the opportunity. What I'll say to our people is what I continue to say. We are in this together. It is a difficult situation, and nobody can tell you it's not difficult because it is. It is difficult for you. It is difficult for me. It is difficult for all of us. But the only way that we are going to overcome this is to be unified in purpose and to have solidarity of purpose where we put our health and the health of our families, our communities, and our country first. That, I think, is the silver lining, so to speak, that if we do what we're supposed to do, if we take this bitter medicine of staying at home and being isolated and being quarantined, if you will, and being under lockdown, uh, all of that is bitter medicine for us. But we understand sometimes that when we have an illness, it is that medicine that ultimately cures us. And so I appeal to our people to be patient, to be understanding, and despite the hardship, to understand that this is for the best for them, their families, and our country. And so that will be my final appeal to our people to continue to persevere and to be strong. We're in this together, and together we will overcome. Premier of Nevis, Mr. Mark Brantley, we thank you for your time, sir. We wish you well. Thank you very much. You're tuned to Winner Fam's 90.9. You're on Voices, and this program comes to you with the very best wishes of Flo and Rams Trading. You're listening to an interview with the Premier of Nevis, Mr. Mark Brantley, and just bringing us up to speed as to his thoughts on COVID-19 and what's happening on Nevis. Flow helps you stay.